A primer of acid-base assessment by physical chemical analysis in strong ion difference. This discussion is presented by Dr. Edward M. Omron, MD, MPH, Pulmonary and Critical Care Medicine, email at edofron at gmail.com. The objectives of this discussion are a critical assessment of conventional acid-base analysis. We will review strong ion difference and physical chemical analysis in acute illness and major surgery, clinical applications in electrolyte management, fluid resuscitation, and complex acid-base disorders will be reviewed. Metabolic acid-base status refers to the non-respiratory changes in hydrogen ion concentration consequent to acute illness and major surgery. Changes in hydrogen ion concentration represent nature's most exquisite index of physiologic stress. Hydrogen ion concentration is regulated at the nanomolar level, while all other major electrolytes are regulated at the millimolar level. Initial assessment of hydrogen ion concentration is of critical importance in the intensive care unit and is a key physiologic parameter altered in multiple disease states. During this discussion, we will endeavor to provide an enhanced approach to complex acid-base analysis based on solid physical chemistry and physical chemical parameters. A 34-year-old white man presents with nausea, vomiting, and has been unable to consume any food or liquids. He admits to drinking about two pints of vodka daily. Temperature is 99.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Pulse is 101, supine, but rises to 126, standing. Respirations are 24 per minute and increased. Blood pressure is 110 over 85, supine, but drops to 80 over 50 when standing. Clinical scenario suggests hypovolemia and evolving early sepsis. Serum electrolytes reveal a sodium of 134, a potassium of 3.8, a chloride of 83, a bicarbonate of 24, a PaO2 of 89, a PCO2 of 32, and a pH of 7.48. Initially, one would suspect this reflects a mild respiratory alkalosis. Also noted is an anion gap of 33, which suggests a metabolic acidosis. When we look at the possible correct responses to this question, question B um, initially seems attractive. However, this is the incorrect answer. There is more going on than a respiratory alkalosis and metabolic acidosis, which will be further explored in the next couple of slides. The concept of pH was first defined in the early 20th century. pH stands for the power of the hydrogen ion concentration, and it is defined as the negative logarithm of the hydrogen ion concentration. pH standard state is equal to 7.4, and that's the same as 40 nanomoles per liter of hydrogen ion concentration. As hydrogen ion concentration goes up, pH goes down, and as hydrogen ion concentration goes down, pH goes up, all in an exponential fashion. In 1917, L.J. Henderson of the Henderson Hasselbach fame published a remarkable manuscript on acid-base status in the journal Science. I quote, The duty of the physician is to discover that quantity of sodium bicarbonate that is diminished to restore that quantity to normal and to hold it there. But while restoring it, he must never increase the quantity above normal. The real intent of this slide was to demonstrate that great acid-base physiologists have a receding hairline. The first placard reviews the Henderson-Hasselbalch equations. The first line reviews the first disassociation constant of carbonic acid. Hydrogen ion concentration combines with bicarbonate to yield carbonic acid, which then breaks down to carbon dioxide in water in the lungs. 
This system represents the most important volatile buffer system in the human body. The second line reviews the Henderson equation. That is, hydrogen ion concentration is equal to 24 times the partial pressure of carbon dioxide divided by bicarbonate. The third line is the logarithmic representation of the Henderson equation, also known as the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. pH is equal to 6.1 plus the log of bicarbonate divided by partial pressure of carbon dioxide times the solubility constant of 0.03. This equation, the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, is a valid descriptive statement of the relationship between bicarbonate, PCO2, and pH. However, over the past 50 years, it has evolved to something more of a mechanistic equation, and that is the bicarbonate is an independent predictor of pH, and the PCO2 is an independent predictor of pH. This, however, is inaccurate. PCO2 indeed does predict pH, and is an independent determinant of it, but bicarbonate is not. We shall see why in the next 20 to 30 minutes. To understand much of the research of the 1950s and 60s and 70s, we must convert the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation to the slope-intercept method. That is, y equals mx plus b format. If we do so, log PCO2 equals negative 1, the slope, multiplied by pH, plus the intercept, log bicarbonate, divided by a constant. This is now called the, in, this is now called the log PCO2 pH equilibration curve, and it reveals a linear relationship between the log PCO2 and pH. This slide reviews the log PCO2 pH curve in plasma. Notice on the y-axis we have the log of PCO2, and on the x-axis we have the pH. There is an elegant in vitro log linear relationship between PCO2 and pH, which is fully explained by the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. However, if we evaluate the log PCO2 pH curve in vivo, not in vitro, but in a living individual, what we find is a curvilinear relationship between log PCO2 and pH. This is unexplained by Henderson-Hasselbalch chemistry. Further, if we look at typical critically ill situations, for example, hypernatremia, this would result in the log PCO2 pH curve being shifted upward and to the right. Hyperchloremia would result in the curve being shifted downward and to the left. Hyperproteinemia would shift the curve downward and to the left, and hypoproteinemia would shift the curve upward and to the right. These physical chemical changes in the log PCO2 pH curve are unexplained by the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. In review, the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation explains the effects of PCO2 on pH in a linear fashion in vitro with high fidelity. However, in critical illness, the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation is found to be inadequate. The effects of changes in plasma sodium, chloride, unmeasured and measured anions and cations, changes in albumin and hyperphosphatemia, also, finally, those effects of resuscitation fluids on pH remain unexplained, and Henderson-Hasselbalch is inadequate in these circumstances. The law of electrical neutrality dominates all aspects of acid-based physiology. Its origin is in Coulomb's law, in the instability of an unstable charge. The law simply states that in the plasma compartment, the charges of the cations must be equal to the charges of the anions under all circumstances, no exceptions. If this rule were not true, we would glow and then explode.
plasma strong ions refer to the strong cations and anions that reside within the plasma compartment. They are sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, chloride, and lactate. They are fully disassociated and exert no buffering effect. Further, they can be combined to generate a positive electrical effect. The combined positive electrical effect of the plasma strong cations and anions algebraically added together is referred to as the strong ion difference. This is a collective unit of charge whose unit is in milliequivalents per liter, simply calculated as the strong cations minus the strong anions within the plasma compartment. Under standard physiologic conditions, this value is 39 milliequivalents per liter, and it is approximated by the difference between sodium and chloride. This is a gamble gram, which illustrates charge balance in the plasma compartment at standard physiologic states. Notice the sodium and chloride are normal, and the overall difference in charge between the plasma strong cations minus the strong anions is 39 milliequivalents per liter. But as we stated earlier, the law of electrical neutrality demands a negative 39 milliequivalents per liter from somewhere. That somewhere originates from the buffer base. This gamble gram now illustrates charge balance again at standard physiologic state. We see the strong ion difference equal to a positive 39 milliequivalents per liter, representing the difference between the plasma strong cations and anions buffered exactly by the plasma buffer base equal to negative 39 milliequivalents per liter. The plasma buffer base is consistent, consists of the total non-volatile weak acid content, A negative, which provides a charge of 14.4 milliequivalents per liter, and the volatile buffer system consisting of bicarbonate at 24.6 milliequivalents per liter. The algebraic total equal to negative 39 milliequivalents per liter. If this situation exists in a human body, it is designated as standard physiologic state. The pH is 7.4, the PCO2 is fixed at 40 millimeters of mercury, the base excess must be equal to zero, the anion gap is equal to 12, and the strong ion gap is equal to a normal 5. This slide is a formal proof of charge balance demonstrating that if all the positive charges are placed on one side and all the negative charges are placed on the other side within the plasma compartment, the law of electrical neutrality must be, met, must be um, valid, revealing again strong ion difference is always equal to buffer base. They are mirror images of each other. The plasma buffer base consists primarily of weak acids, pKa's in the range of 5.8 to 8.9, hovering on both sides of pH 7.4, standard physiologic state. The volatile buffer system with bicarbonate is reviewed again, revealing bicarbonate plus hydrogen ion concentration, resulting in carbonic acid, and then dissolving the carbon dioxide in water in the lungs. This again is an open buffer system in plasma. The non-volatile buffer anions refer to albumin, inorganic phosphorus, and total citrate. The slide again reviews the charge balance of the buffer base, which is, at standard physiologic state, negative 39 milliequivalents per liter. This slide refers to standard physiologic state in plasma for a 70 kilogram test subject whose total body water is equal to 60% total weight. The examples that follow in this discussion are based on these baseline uh, metabolic and physiologic parameters. The calculation of strong ion difference or buffer base at the bedside is quite easy. The buffer base can be simply calculated as the bicarbonate or total CO2 from a chemistry panel plus 2.8 times the albumin in grams per deciliter plus 0.6 times inorganic phosphorus concentration in milligrams per deciliter. This buffer base should be equal to negative 39 milliequivalents per liter. The formal calculation also can be obtained from the Fig Fenkel algorithm, which is available online at http www.figfenkel.org. 
a fundamental principle introduced into clinical medicine in 1948 by Singer and Hastings is the relationship between strong ion difference and buffer base. A change in strong ion difference must induce a change in buffer base. This is a one-way physical chemical event. Buffer base can never change strong ion difference. That would be thermodynamically impossible. So, in review, a change in strong ion difference forces a change in buffer base. Displacement from normal 39 milliequivalents per liter quantitates the magnitude of the metabolic acid base disorder. This is a PCO2 independent index. Our first example illustrating these points will be hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis. Notice that in this example, the plasma chloride is increased to 116 milliequivalents per liter. This is an overall increase in 10 milliequivalents per liter from standard physiologic states. We have now introduced 10 milliequivalents of negatively charged anions into the plasma compartment. This will algebraically titrate down the strong ion difference from 39 to 29. And as we stated earlier, the buffer base must, in kind, contract to maintain charge balance according to the law of electrical neutrality. And notice the buffer base contraction to negative 29. Bicarbonate must contract in response to this, and the resultant acidosis is demonstrated. The pH becomes 7.209, the PCO2 becomes 40, and the base excess plasma is equal to negative 10 milliequivalents per liter, exactly equal to the increase in plasma chloride. Notice also the anion gap is mildly decreased from standard state from 12 to 11. This placard also reveals the mechanism by which the acid base disorder can be corrected. Notice that if the plasma chloride is once again reduced to 106 milliequivalents per liter, standard physiologic state will be recovered. Very simple in concept. This slide reviews the buffer base in greater detail in hyperchloremia. Notice we start off at a chloride of 106 and the bicarbonate is normal at 24.6 milliequivalents per liter. And the albumin phosphate citrate, the non-volatile weak acid buffers, are equal to negative 14.4 milliequivalents per liter. When the buffer base contracts to negative 29, because of the constraints of the strong ion difference, the bicarbonate must contract to 15.8. How this happens is secondary to a multiple series of chemical reactions that occur. However, charge balance must always be maintained, and a metabolic acidosis ensues. And notice the base excess of plasma approximates both the change in bicarbonate and the change in plasma chloride. Our second example is lactic acidosis. If for, by whatever means or mechanism, the plasma lactate is elevated to 10 millimoles per liter, this introduces 10 negative charges or anions into the plasma compartment. This algebraically titrates down the strong ion difference from 39 to 29, forcing the buffer base again to contract to negative 29. The situation is no different than a hyperchloremia of 116. What we have done, we've again introduced 10 milliequivalents of negatively charged anions into the plasma compartment, resulting in a metabolic acidosis, pH equal to 7.208, PCO2 fixed at 40, with again a base deficit of 10 millimoles per liter. Notice also, correction of this acid-base abnormality is immediately evident by the removal of the lactate from this system. Once lactate is met metabolized off, acid-base standard acid-base status at standard physiologic state will be recovered. Our next example is ketoacidosis. In this hypothetical experiment, if we introduce 10 millimoles per liter of ketones into this system, again, 10 millimoles of negatively charged anions are introduced into uh, the plasma compartment, algebraically titrating down the strong ion difference from a normal 39 to 29. 
the buffer base again contracts to negative 29 milliequivalents per liter, resulting in a metabolic acidosis no different than lactic acidosis or hyperchloremic acidosis. The pH again is negative 7.208, the PCO2 is fixed at 40, with a base deficit of negative 10 millimoles per liter. Restoration of standard physiologic state again consists of removal of this excess negative charge that exists in the plasma compartment. Once the ketones have been metabolized off, what remains often in diabetic ketoacidosis is the hyperchloremic phase of diabetic ketoacidosis. And in this circumstance, chloride has now replaced the ketones and is again increased to 116 millimoles per liter. This acid-base scenario is no different than uncomplicated hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis. And its correction mechanistically would occur if chloride is returned back to standard state of 106. As you can see, because of these mechanistic changes that occur in diabetic ketoacidosis, I'm an advocate of lactated ringers as the preferred fluid of resuscitation in this clinical situation. Lactated ringers is low in chloride also provides some excess free water and some potassium, which these individuals often require. We'll further explore this recommendation later at the end of the discussion. We can extend these principles to hypochloremic metabolic acidosis. If, for example, we lower the plasma chloride from 106 to 96, we drop it by 10 milliequivalents per liter. This can happen in a number of, of clinical scenarios. For example, severe compensated chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or status post-aggressive diuresis and acute respiratory distress syndrome. What we notice now is that we have removed 10 milliequivalents of anions from the plasma compartment. This is the same as the addition of 10 milliequivalents of plasma cations to the plasma compartment and the strong ion difference increases from standard state to a positive 49 milliequivalents per liter. The buffer base now must expand to maintain charge balance, and bicarbonate must augment as well to maintain charge balance, resulting in a metabolic alkalosis. pH in this system is equal to 7.54, the PCO2 is fixed at 40, the base excess of plasma is again 10 milliequivalents per liter positive, approximating the change in chloride. Also, we notice that the anion gap is now increased to 13 in this scenario, again, which we'll explore later. What we see is a very clean relationship between pH and strong ion difference. At standard physiologic state of 39 milliequivalents per liter, the pH is equal to 7.4. However, as the strong ion difference decreases, the pH becomes more acidotic and acidemic. As the strong ion difference increases above 39, pH becomes more alkalemic. This is a fundamental relationship between strong ion difference and pH. So now we can review the etiology of acid-base disturbances as understood in 1962, changes in strong ion difference, if increased, result in a metabolic alkalosis or an excess of plasma cations. If the strong ion difference is reduced, this results in a metabolic acidosis or an excess of plasma anions. With this information, we can now very clearly understand the concept of plasma base excess or deficit. If we take 39, standard physiologic state, and we place it below zero, and we do a shift whereby a strong ion difference of 34 is equal to negative 5 base deficit, and a strong ion difference of 44 is equal to a positive 5 base excess, we can now see clearly where the base excess deficit scale is derived. 
Plasma base deficit below zero represents an excess of plasma anions in the plasma compartment. Plasma base excess above zero represents an excess of plasma cations in the plasma compartment. The numbers, are pro the numbers denote the magnitude of the excess. Again, this summarizes acid base status circa 1962. So let's review the base excess scale for metabolic acid base disorders. If the base deficit is greater than negative 2, a metabolic acidosis exists, and there is an excess of anions in this system. If the base excess is greater than plus 2, a metabolic alkalosis exists, and there is an excess of plasma cations in this system. The change from 39 reflects the degree of anion cation disparity regarding only the strong ions. The magnitude of the metabolic component of an acid base disorder can now be very cleanly defined. This again is a PCO2 independent index. Standard base excess is derived from the plasma base excess, but is considered a more useful parameter for a multitude of reasons. Again, a positive value indicates an excess of plasma cations or a metabolic alkalosis. A negative value indicates an excess of plasma anions or a metabolic acidosis. Standard base excess refers to the magnitude of, a, of the metabolic component of an acid-base disorder in the extracellular fluid compartment. This adjusts for the Gibbs donut effect, unlike the base excess of plasma. Which profile in this slide has the most severe metabolic acid-base derangement? A, pH equal to 7.19, PCO2 equal to 40, bicarbonate equal to 15. B, pH equal to 7.55, PCO2 equal to 18, bicarbonate equal to 15. C, pH equal to 7.10, PCO2 equal to 74, bicarbonate equal to 22. As you can see, it is exceedingly difficult to gauge the magnitude of the metabolic component of each of these disorders given the concurrent respiratory changes. Standard base excess provides a very clear definition of the magnitude of the metabolic acid base disorder. We see very clearly that example A has the worst metabolic acidosis, while examples B and C are approximately the same. We're going to switch gears now and define some new concepts. Dehydration and water intoxication are common physiologic events in acute and critical illness. This refers to the water loss and gain from the intracellular and interstitial compartments. It is associated with hyper and hypotonicity and changes in plasma sodium. This excludes, obviously, uremia, diabetic ketoacidosis, non-ketotic hyperosmolar coma, and mannitol. The symptoms initially are thirst, but then evolve to confusion and coma. Quantitatively, this is described as free water deficiency and or excess, which is defined as the volume of water slash free water that must be removed or added to a hypotonic or hypertonic plasma to make isotonic in plasma. The primary treatment of dehydration is D5W with electrolytes, sometimes diuretics and as well hypertonic saline. An excellent review of this concept can be found in language guiding therapy, the case of dehydration versus volume depletion in the annals of internal medicine as listed. Volume depletion, however, is quite distinct from dehydration. What we're referring to is hypo or hypervolemia. This refers to extracellular fluid compartment volume depletion or excess, which directly affects the vascular tree. This is a surrogate term for the cardiac, where the cardiac function curve lies in the Starling curve. The diagnosis is assessed via macrocirculatory impairment, blood pressure, heart rate changes, and orthostatics, also microcirculatory impairment, lactic acidosis, and low venous saturations. 
The treatment primarily consists of crystalloids, colloids, packed red blood cells, and diuretics. The concepts of dehydration and volume depletion are unfortunately often confused by house staff, clinicians, and in the medical literature. Recall, dehydration affects the intracellular compartment, volume depletion affects the extracellular compartment. Changes in extracellular and intracellular compartment volumes can be and often are disassociated. An indiscriminate use of terms dehydration and volume depletion risks confusion and therapeutic errors. The treatment of dehydration versus hypovolemia is clearly illustrated by this placard. Notice that if an individual is dehydrated by one liter of water lost from the intracellular compartment, one liter of 5% dextrose will resuscitate the intracellular fluid space with almost two-thirds of that liter. However, normal saline, in contrast, would provide no benefit to the intracellular compartment. In contrast, the patient presents with hypovolemia and low fluid in the intravascular compartment. Normal saline, when given as one liter, will increase the plasma volume by 250 milliliters. Hence, definition of dehydration and hypovolemia is critical during diagnosis and therapeutic interventions. However, dehydration has another important concept in acid-base status, which we shall review now. Free water excess and deficits have a remarkable effect on plasma chloride concentration. Free water abnormalities are initially detected as an abnormal sodium. Plasma chloride has to be corrected for the dilution or concentration of plasma sodium. This equation is concentration of chloride predicted equals concentration of chloride normal, whatever normal is at your institution. It is 106 for this discussion, multiplied by the concentration of sodium observed, divided by the concentration of sodium normal. So, for example, if plasma sodium is equal to 155 millimoles per liter, then the concentration of plasma chloride should be equal to 106, normal chloride concentration, multiplied by sodium observed, 155, divided by normal plasma sodium, 142, or 115 moles per liter. What we see is that dehydration and hypernatremia of 155 millimoles per liter, the expected plasma chloride should be 115 millimoles per liter. This is not hyperchloremia. This is expected changes in chloride secondary to dehydration. Also, if plasma, chloride, if plasma sodium is reduced to 131 millimoles per liter, for example, then the predicted concentration of chloride would be equal to 106 multiplied by 131 divided by 142, or 97 millimoles per liter. This is not hypochloremia, but an example of a chloride effect secondary to water excess. This slide reviews again the effects of dehydration and water intoxication on plasma chloride. As we lose free water, plasma sodium increases, and consequently the plasma chloride increases as well. As we gain free water, plasma sodium decreases and plasma chloride decreases as well. The whole point of this discussion is to demonstrate that plasma chloride is coupled to plasma sodium. And during states of dehydration, one has to correct the plasma chloride to know, indeed, if there is an elevation or decrease in plasma chloride. This as well applies to in states of water intoxication. So, if we refer back to our initial question, we can now further assess the correct answer. In this example, the 34-year-old male is orthostatic 
and evolving into early sepsis. We already know that he has a metabolic acidosis because of the increased anion gap. Further, he has demonstrated a mild respiratory alkalosis as well. Now, if we correct the chloride, we find that it is equal to 100 milliequivalents per liter. That is the corrected plasma chloride. However, this individual's chloride is 83, far below the expected plasma chloride. Or in other words, there is 17 milliequivalents per liter of excess cations in this system. 17 being derived from 100 minus 83. This excess of cations also correlates to a base excess plasma of plus 17. This is a huge metabolic alkalosis that would be unrecognized if we did not correct for chloride. Another way of assessing for this uh, disorder quickly is the difference between sodium and chloride in the electrolyte panel. If that difference exceeds 40, a metabolic alkalosis is likely present. So the correct answer to this question is D, respiratory alkalosis, metabolic acidosis, and metabolic alkalosis. So now we can review the etiology of metabolic acid-base disturbances comprehensively. We see changes in strong ion difference, water deficit in excess, and cation and anion imbalance. Again, this refers to acid-base assessment 1962. Once again, we reverse, re review standard physiologic states with inorganic phosphorus equal to 3.6 milligrams per deciliter. Notice that the strong ion difference is equal to 39, the buffer base is equal to negative 39, bicarbonate is normal, sodium and chloride is normal, and the pH is equal to 7.4, the PCO2 fixed at 40, and the base excess is equal to 0 milliequivalents per liter. If we increase inorganic phosphorus from 3.6 to 10 milligrams per deciliter, which not uncommonly occurs during acute kidney injury or on individuals with chronic end-stage kidney disease, what we notice is the development of a significant metabolic acidosis. The impact of inorganic phosphorus occurs in the non-volatile weak acids, where their charge contribution increases. Bicarbonate must be titrated down to maintain charge balance, even though the strong ion difference and buffer base remain normal in this circumstance. In this circumstance, pH drops to 7.337. And what we see is the non-volatile weak acids also are an independent determinant of pH because the strong ion difference has remained unchanged. But yet a metabolic acidosis evolves. This is another hypothetical example of standard state acid-base status. But in this example, albumin is fully extracted from the plasma compartment. If albumin is completely extracted from the plasma compartment, its charge component to the non-volatile weak acids is markedly diminished. And all that remains is the inorganic phosphorus and to a small extent citrate. Bicarbonate in this scenario must increase to make up the charge balance, and what we see is a marked metabolic alkalosis. This is termed a hypoalbuminemic metabolic alkalosis and is commonly seen in critical illness. Notice as well, there is no change in strong ion difference in this context, revealing again the non-volatile weak acids are an independent determinant of acid-base status. Also notice the multiple different inputs that can change bicarbonate. Changes in albumin, changes in phosphorus, changes in serum electrolytes. All of these have a profound effect on bicarbonate, which then affects pH. Bicarbonate is an intermediate marker of acid-base status. It is not an independent determinant of pH. What we see on this slide is pH as a function of serum albumin concentration. Notice that standard physiologic state 4.4 grams of albumin correlates to a pH of 7.4. But as the albumin concentration decreases, pH goes up. And as the albumin concentration increases, pH goes down. Hypoalbuminemia is seen commonly in critical illness. 
and this hypoalbuminemic effect on acid-base status proves useful when a concurrent metabolic acidosis exists. In this slide, we review once again hyperchloremic acidosis with a normal plasma albumin level of 4.4 grams per deciliter. Plasma chloride is increased from baseline 106 to 116 milliequivalents per liter, generating an algebraic drop in the strong ion difference from 39 to 29 and a collapse of the buffer base which follows. A metabolic acidosis is seen, pH 7.208 with a base excess of negative 10 milliequivalents per liter, approximating the change in plasma chloride. Now look what happens if the plasma albumin drops from 4.4 to 2 grams per deciliter, a rather common event in the intensive care unit. Because of the loss of charge to the non-volatile weak acid component A negative, bicarbonate now must augment to make up the charge difference. This results in a physiologic buffering of the metabolic acidosis and the pH increases to 7.338. The base excess also increases. This is termed hyperchloremic strong ion acidosis with concurrent hypoalbuminemic alkalosis. It is a physiologic event that is hardwired into our plasma during critical illness. The slide reviews the events in greater detail. Notice that at normal plasma albumin of 4.4 grams per deciliter, its charge component is 13.2 milliequivalents per liter. However, as the concentration of albumin decreases, its charge contribution to the buffer base diminishes, and bicarbonate must augment to make up for the charge difference, resulting in a buffering effect and an, and an alkalosis that is generated. So, in review, hypoalbuminemia is an adaptive response. It is well known and recognized that hypoalbuminemia is an independent risk factor for mortality in the intensive care unit. However, there is benefit by hypoalbuminemia by restoring pH towards normal. For example, if one starts off with a base deficit of negative 10 millimoles per liter, secondary to a lactic acidosis of 10 millimoles per liter, the albumin, 4.4 grams per deciliter, the pH is 7.2. But if the albumin drops to 1.1 grams per deciliter, the pH increases to normal, 7.38. This is remarkably beneficial in acute illness that is often concurrently associated with acute kidney injury. This again illustrates pH as a function of albumin and strong ion difference. Notice that at a strong ion difference of 29 and albumin of 4.4 grams, we have an acidosis of 7.2. But as albumin concentration decreases, going up the line, pH improves. Albumin, in review, is a non-volatile plasma weak acid buffer. Normal concentration is 4 to 4.4 grams per deciliter. One gram of albumin is equal to about 3 milliequivalents of acid. And it accounts for approximately 12.5 milliequivalents of plasma fixed acid in terms of the non-volatile fixed acids of plasma. If albumin drops, that is termed hypoalbuminemia, and an alkalosis results. If albumin increases, and this is termed hyperalbuminemia, and an acidosis results. The loss of a weak acid like albumin from the plasma compartment is similar to a gain in basic equivalents, or an alkalosis. In 2000, in the journal, American Journal of Respiratory and Critical Care Medicine, Drs. Fenkel, Jabor, Kazda, and Fig provided an excellent review for the diagnosis of metabolic acid-based disturbances in critically ill patients. 
their conclusions were very compelling. Hypoalbuminemia is pervasive in acute illness and surgery. Hypoalbuminemic alkalosis exists to some extent in all critically ill patients. And hypoalbuminemia corrects pH towards standard state in acute illness. We can now review the etiology of metabolic acid-based disturbances in a far more global and comprehensive fashion than we could with Henderson Hasselbach. <clears throat> Notice changes in strong ion difference, increased metabolic alkalosis, reduced metabolic acidosis, water deficit in excess states, cation anion imbalance, hypochloremia alkalosis, anion deficient, hyperchloremia acidosis, anion excess, organic acids, acidosis and anion excess, and then abnormal concentrations of all the plasma weak acids, albumin and phosphate. This table lists a primary classification of metabolic acid-based disturbances according to strong ion difference. And notice that a comprehensive assessment of acid-based disorders are included in this algorithm. The anion gap was reintroduced into clinical medicine in 1977 by Drs. O and Carroll. It is also based on the law of electrical neutrality, and it looks at a virtual discrepancy between cations and anions in the plasma compartments. It is equal, in its most pure form, to sodium plus potassium minus chloride minus bicarbonate, which equals approximately 16. If the anion gap is in excess of 16, unmeasured acids must be present. And historically, it has been useful in facilitating the differential diagnosis of metabolic acidosis. Of note, the 16 milliequivalents per liter calculated can be entirely accounted for by the charge contribution from the non-volatile weak acids by albumin and phosphorus. And it can be calculated at, by 2.8 multiplied by the albumin plus 0.5 times the phosphorus. Recent and literature has revealed that the anion gap is very unreliable in critical illness. This stems from the effects of hypoalbuminemia, pH changes, and the Gibbs donut effect. This is an anion gap illustration with Gamble Graham. And notice that the anion gap reflects both the unmeasured anions that may exist in the plasma compartment and the non-volatile weak acid components, that is albumin, phosphorus, and citrate. Unmeasured anions are pervasive in critical illness, and they can include cyanide, glycols, iron, isoniazide, keto acids, Krebs cycle, intermediates, lactate, methanol, paraldehyde, toluene, salicylate, and uremia. Example, 68-year-old male with an upper GI bleed presents to your intensive care unit. Sodium, 132, potassium, 4, chloride, 98, bicarbonate, 22. Lactate elevated to 4.5, albumin reduced to 2.8. When we calculate the anion gap, it is normal. How could this be? This is so because of the reduced albumin. The reduced albumin normal. This reduced albumin reduces the anion gap and makes it appear normal. <clears throat> if we correct the anion gap for albumin deficiency, we once again see the excess acid load. Again, our correction is adding back the lost charge from hypoalbuminemia. Notice also that anion gap as a function of albumin concentration. At a normal albumin concentration of 4.4, the anion gap is normal. As albumin concentration diminishes, the anion gap collapses secondary to the loss of charge from the albumin moiety. Also, as the albumin concentration increases, the, albumin, the anion gap increases secondary to the additional charge from the albumin moiety. pH also has a very significant effect on the anion gap. The more severe the, the acidemia, the greater the collapse in the anion gap. 
This has to do with the charge which is being removed from the albumin moiety. Also, the more severe the alkalinia, the increase in the anion gap is observed. This has to do with opening more charges on the albumin moiety during severe alkalinias, leading to significant error in critical illness when this parameter is used, unless it is corrected for albumin. So, the anion gap is an insensitive index of organic acidosis in acute illness and post-surgery because of hypoalbuminemia and pH effects. If we adjust the anion gap for hypoalbuminemia, that is, anion gap plus 2.8 multiplied by 4.4 minus the observed albumin, we now can restore its validity in critical illness. An increased anion gap, acidosis. Decreased anion gap, alkalosis. Another entity that has been defined recently is the strong ion gap. Strong ion gap refers to unmeasured or measured anions of critical illness. For example, all organic anions, ketones, and lactate. It is a co-determinant of the strong ion difference, and it is calculated by strong ion difference apparent, which we will define, minus the buffer base. Strong ion difference apparent is uh, the difference in sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, chloride, and lactate which is calculated directly from their serum, serum chemistries. This parameter is not affected by pH or albumin and essentially is equivalent, equivalent to a corrected anion gap. If we look at the Gamble-Gram form of the strong ion gap, we can see its derivation. It is equal to the strong ion difference apparent minus the buffer base, leaving behind the unmeasured acids. A recent article illustrates some potential uses of the strong ion gap in critical illness. Published in Intensive Care Medicine, this article reveals that the strong ion gap is related to the outcome after cardiac arrest in patients treated with therapeutic hypothermia. What we see is that an elevated strong ion gap is associated with an increased mortality. The nature of the strong ion gap has been debated for years, and it may reflect citric acid intermediates, but its exact nature remains to be deduced. The strong ion difference, the apparent strong ion difference, the strong ion gap, and the buffer base can all be calculated at the bedside with simple equations, as illustrated here. So, we now can review the independent determinants of pH. Firstly, strong ion difference. Secondly, strong ion gap. Thirdly, plasma weak acids. Fourthly, carbon dioxide production. This is physical chemical analysis. Physical chemical analysis states there are three ind independent determinants of acid base status. Strong ion difference, PCO2, and variable weak acid total. I have not reviewed PCO2, given that uh, this talk is primarily on metabolic acid-base status. Physical chemical analysis uh, is mechanistic, quantitative, guides diagnosis and therapy. Dr. Stewart reintroduced this concept in 1983 in the Journal of Physiologic Pharmacology. If you have an opportunity to review it, it is a wonderful read. So, we can now refer to a little discussion on the nature of crystalloid solutions. All solutions that I use in the intensive care unit are isotonic to minimize fluid fluxes between the compartments. Normal saline, for example, has a sodium content of 154 and a chloride of 154. Its strong ion difference is equal to zero because that's the difference between sodium and chloride. Lactated ringers, its composition as illustrated, has a strong ion difference of 28. One half normal saline with 75 milliequivalents of bicarb has a strong ion difference of 75 milliequivalents per liter. And sodium bicarbonate has a strong ion difference of 150 milliequivalents per liter.
Remember, when you infuse a crystalloid solution into a surgical or critically ill patient, this solution admixes with the plasma compartment, the interstitial compartment, the extracellular compartment, and you change the strong ion difference of the plasma, interstitial, and extracellular compartments by pure admixture. Saline, for example, has a very low strong ion difference compared to the body of 39. Lactated ringers has a strong ion difference of 28, and that more closely approximates the strong ion difference of the human body. Both one half normal saline with 75 of bicarb and bicarbonate have very high strong ion differences. Relationship of crystalloid strong ion difference to serum bicarbonate. Very important. If the crystalloid strong ion difference approximates the plasma bicarbonate of 24.6 millimoles per liter, no change in standard base excess or acid base status will evolve with large volume resuscitation. This is seen with lactated ringers, Hartman solution, and Hextend. If the crystalloid solution strong ion difference is less than the plasma bicarbonate, a metabolic acidosis will result with large volume infusion, for example, normal saline. If the crystalloid strong ion difference is greater than plasma bicarbonate, a metabolic alkalosis will evolve with large volume, and large volume infusion. This chart reviews the metabolic acid base effects of crystalloid infusion. On the x-axis, we see uh, crystalloid infusion volume. On the y-axis, standard base excess. Notice that with large volume saline infusion, we generate a metabolic acidosis. With infusion of a hypothetical crystalloid whose strong ion difference is equivalent to standard state bicarbonate, no change in acid base status occurs with high volume infusion. Theoretically, lactated ringers induces a very mild metabolic alkalosis. However, the magnitude of the metabolic alkalosis increases as the strong ion difference in, um, increases beyond uh, standard states. This line right here refers to a plasma light, strong ion difference of 50. The one above it refers to one half normal saline plus 75 of bicarb, strong ion difference of 75. And the one above that refers to isotonic bicarbonate infusion. We will now introduce the concept of physical chemical resuscitation. Principle Patients in shock with a metabolic acidosis are optimally managed with an isotonic crystalloid solutions that are alkaline when infused. Patients with normal acid base status are managed with isotonic balanced solutions, and patients with metabolic alkalosis are optimally managed with isotonic solutions that are acidic when infused. The principles of early goal directed therapy are to be done concurrently with physical chemical resuscitation. This is my empiric chart for crystalloid resuscitation in acute illness. It provides clean guidelines for the choice of fluids during severe acidemias or alkalemias. Notice that between a, if the plasma standard, correction, if the standard base deficit is between zero and negative five, lactated ringers is advocated as the choice resuscitation fluid. If it is between negative five and negative 10, one half normal saline with 75 mil equivalents of bicarb is recommended as the choice resuscitation fluid. If it is greater than negative 10, isotonic bicarbonate is advocated as the choice resuscitation fluid. If the base excess is between 0 to 5, normal saline is advocated as the resuscitation fluid. And if the base excess is in excess of 10, hydrochloric infusion and or diamox with dialysis may be appropriate to restore standard physiologic state. So, a review of isotonic normal saline. 0.9% sodium chloride in sterile water. Sodium is 154, chloride is 154. Notice that it is hyperchloremic relative to plasma chloride of 106. Its strong ion difference is zero. It's an excellent choice in hypovolemic, hypochloremic 
disorders with metabolic alkalosis. It induces a 1.8 milliequivalents of base deficit per liter infused and also a hyperchloremia. Lactated Ringer's solution is a polyionic isotonic crystalloid that mimics plasma electrolyte concentration. Notice that its strong ion difference is 28 and approximates closely the plasma bicarbonate of 24. It's an excellent choice in mild metabolic acidosis with preserved renal function. It generates 0.4 millimoles per liter of fixed base per when infused. The solution, one half normal saline with 75 milliequivalents of bicarb, is created by taking a liter of one half normal saline and adding 1.5 amps of sodium bicarb. It is isotonic and can be used both for resuscitation and maintenance. The strong ion difference of the solution is plus 75, markedly higher than standard physiologic state bicarbonate. Its main use in, is in the treatment of hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis with reduced renal function, with plasma base deficits in the negative 10 to negative 5 region. It creates 4 millimoles of fixed base per liter infused. And then isotonic sodium bicarbonate administration is created with 3 amps of sodium bicarb in 1 liter of sterile water. D5W also can be used in emergent situations, but notice that that is a hyperosmolar solution. This can be used for isotonic resuscitation and maintenance. Its strong ion difference is quite high at 150 milliequivalents per liter, markedly higher than the bicarbonate of 24.6 at standard state. It is an excellent choice in malignant acidemias and can be a bridge to acute dialysis if the base deficit exceeds 10. It generates 9 millimoles of fixed base per liter infused. This is a graph revealing the effects of physical chemical resuscitation during moderate metabolic acidosis. Notice that if an individual presents with a base deficit of negative 5, high volume resuscitation with saline will aggravate this disorder. Resuscitation with a crystalloid strong ion difference equal to the individual's plasma bicarbonate of 20 will result in no change in acid base status. Lactated ringers will result in a mild metabolic alkalosis relative to isotonic crystalloid at 20 milliequivalents per liter. However, acid base status will not be recovered. 500 milliliters of sodium bicarbonate will restore standard state. 1.25 liters of 1 half normal saline with 75 milliequivalents of bicarbonate will restore standard state. And 2.5 liters of plasma light will restore standard state. Assumptions. Normal renal function. Recall. Acute and chronic kidney injury result in marked impairment in chloride and potassium excretion. Volumes of distribution change abruptly in acute illness and surgery. Also, these calculations ignore the effects of tissue buffering. Review of bicarbonate solutions. Historically, hyperosmolar solutions have been used. One amp contains 50 milliequivalents of sodium bicarb in 50 cc's, or a one molar solution. This resulted in the correction of extracellular acidosis at the expense of massive intracellular derangement and fluxes. There was no predefined physical chemical endpoint when infused. Also, hypertonic volume expansion occurred as well, which has recently shown to increase mortality and shock. Recommendation is to only use isotonic solutions, sterile water and D5W with 3 amps of sodium bicarb, 0.15 molar solutions. Bicarbonate solutions also has other side effects. It activates phosphofructokinase, resulting and aggravating a concurrent lactic acidosis, and it markedly increases minute ventilation in individuals who have a tenuous respiratory status. This is a review of how alkalosis activates phosphofructokinase. As we can see, this activation will then increase 
the supply of pyruvate, which then will increase uh, the generation of lactate. This is a case example of a 28-year-old male with acute respiratory distress syndrome undergoing diuresis. The pH is 7.61, the PaCO2 is 40 millimeters of mercury, and the bicarb is increased to 39.4 millimoles per liter. The base excess is 17 millimoles per liter. A whopping metabolic alkalosis is present. By examining the chemistries, we see the mechanism. Sodium is 144 millimoles per liter, and chloride appears reduced to 91 millimoles per liter. If we do chloride corrected, we find that the chloride should be equivalent to 107 millimoles per liter. This is a loss of 16 millimoles of plasma chloride, or a gain of 16 millimoles of excess cations, and thus completely explaining the base excess of 16.8 millimoles per liter. So we have here a severe hypochloremic metabolic alkalosis secondary to ongoing diuresis, which results and the predominant excess loss of chloride relative to sodium within the kidney. Treatment should be restoration of plasma chloride to standard physiologic state with close interval surveillance as this process is undertaken. Hydrochloric infusion, isotonic 0.1 normal, is advocated if your pharmacy can create such a concoction. However, most often we resort to the introduction of diamox over the course of three to five days to restore plasma chloride. Second case example, 67-year-old female with ischemic bowel. Blood pressure reduced to 80 over 40, heart rate 120, Hematocrit reduced to 25, pH 7.26, PaCO2 24, bicarbonate 11, base deficit 14.6 millimoles per liter. Sodium is 143 and chloride is increased to 118. Chloride corrected should be 106. So what we see is an excess of 12 millimoles of chloride in this system. How do we fix? I think first and foremost, we must bear in mind that this individual has evolving septic shock, possible ongoing bleeding with anemia, and that our attention to early goal-directed therapy must not be forsaken. However, our resuscitation fluids should be isotonic and balanced, so we do not aggravate this metabolic acid-base disorder. And what I would advocate in this circumstance is the use of isotonic sodium bicarbonate solution as both resuscitation and maintenance. Final example, 78-year-old male with severe pneumonia and sepsis. pH is fairly normal at 7.37, PCO2 is at 27. That is significantly reduced. Bicarbonate's at 15.2, again significantly reduced with a base deficit of negative 9. Serum sodium is 134, revealing a mild water intoxication, with an elevated chloride of 113, revealing a mild possible hyperchloremia. And albumin is reduced to 3 grams per deciliter. If chloride is corrected, it should equal to 100 millimoles per liter. So indeed, we have an excess of 13 millimoles of chloride, or an excess of 13 millimoles of negative charges in the plasma compartment. The mechanism of metabolic acidosis is hyperchloremia, with a mild free water excess reducing sodium. Also, there's a mild buffering effect from hypoalbuminemic alkalosis. How do you fix? Again, I think you have to bear in mind that this individual does indeed merit early goal-directed therapy according to established guidelines. But our fluid choice should be wise enough to prevent aggravation and possibly may be useful in correcting the underlying hidden acid-based disorders in this patient. A PCO2 of 27 means a challenge to this individual's minute ventilation requirement. And by correcting acid-based status, we may unload the lungs and prevent intubation. The fluid I recommend in this circumstance is number three, or one half normal saline with 75 mil equivalents of sodium bicarb. Additional resources, HTTP, 
www.slidesharenet.edophron, acidbase.org, and figfempel.org. Thank you very much.